Equity scaring people to think that they're going to lose their benefits and their coverage without giving a full accounting of everything that this includes. It includes uh, very generous expansions of health savings accounts. Concern over the Senate health care proposal continues as the White House continues to deal with backlash over the president's announcement he does not have tapes of conversations with FBI Director James Comey after all. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll discuss another fun, action-filled week in Washington, but first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin with the investigation into something that should never happen. A teenager getting a hold of a gun and accidentally killing his 12-year-old brother. Bradenton police say Abraham Luna's 13-year-old brother accidentally shot him inside their home yesterday afternoon. He was pronounced dead at Manatee Memorial Hospital. It is unclear how the teen got the gun. The children's home is owned by the Bradenton Housing Authority, which has a policy against firearms. Some neighbors say that they are aware of the policy. Others say they had no idea guns are not allowed. Because like that, they just should let people know beforehand and let them know what's going on. That's the policy like that. You cannot have unsecured guns around kids. And these were young kids. These were 12 and 13 year old kids. The Bradenton Housing Authority is declining comment on the shooting and its policy against firearms. Jury selection begins in the trial of Punta Gorda's police chief, Chief Tom Lewis is facing a second-degree misdemeanor charge of culpable negligence in the death of 73-year-old Mary Knowlton. She was fatally shot by former officer Lee Cole during a role-playing demonstration last August. Cole was fired from the department and also faces charges. Last month, a judge denied the chief's request to have the charges dismissed. The city of Sarasota prohibits the homeless from sleeping outdoors, but the settlement of a two-year lawsuit means the homeless can no longer be arrested for it. A federal judge approved the settlement Thursday, stating that the city can't enforce its code unless other arrangements are available. Right now, the city has a contract with the Salvation Army for 20 emergency beds. Sarasota police say the settlement won't change how its homeless outreach unit operates. The ACLU says most changes will be on how individuals are treated at the Salvation Army. To us, this is the new standard in how municipalities and governments should treat uh, unsheltered individuals who are homeless with dignity. This doesn't change the way that we operate dealing with homeless in our community. As a matter of fact, over two years, closer to three years, we have already been doing everything that's in this settlement agreement. The Salvation Army can no longer put people on floor mats. Individuals in emergency beds can store property, and no one has to take part in religious services. Lock it up. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office is on the lookout for three suspects following a string of car burglaries. Personal items were stolen from several unlocked vehicles on Glenbrook Drive, Glenbrook Court, and Glenbrook Place in Bradenton. A credit card stolen from one of the cars was traced to a Shell gas station on Lockwood Ridge Road. Detectives believe the woman captured on the surveillance who used, used one of the cards is one of the suspects. If you recognize the person in these photos or have any information, you're asked to call, contact the Manatee County Crime Stoppers at the number listed on your screen. Two Florida children have already died this year after being left inside hot cars nationwide. Almost 40 kids died last year. Now the Department of Children and Families is reminding parents to stay focused to ensure no kid is accidentally left in a hot vehicle. Under Florida law, it is illegal to leave a child unattended in a car at any time of the year. DCF says if you ever see a kid left alone in the car, call 911. An autopsy is planned to find out how and why a pilot whale washed up on Siesta Key Beach this morning died. Deputies found the 12-foot whale on the shore around 3 o'clock this morning. They called Moat Marine Lab's Stranding Investigations Program to help. The whale was brought to the Ken Thompson boat ramp. Scientists say pilot whales aren't typically so close to shore because they live in deep water. It's rare, and we typically don't see just one. Um, in my nearly 20 years of doing this, I've only had that I can think of two that have stranded alone. So, you know, we're in high alert right now to make sure that there aren't other animals out there that are about to hit our beaches. 
Moat Marine urges anyone who sees a stranded dead or dolphin uh, or sea turtle in Manatee or Sarasota counties to contact its Stranded Investigations program. Dozens of students today took part in a unique hands-on field trip to learn more about the seabirds that they see on the Sun Coast every day. The group Save Our Seabirds and Sarasota County Parks and Recreation teamed up to teach children how to identify birds, rescue and protect them. Students say they learned a lot. To not feed the birds when you're at the beach and to clean up the plastic on the shore of the beach. We're coming here to give the students a good experience of a wide variety of birds and their habitats, their characteristics, and what they do, and also how they affect the environment. That's our biggest goal here is how they really affect them because these students get to see these birds quite a bit in their own area down here in Florida. The event is the first in a summer-long environmental series of continuing education. And Bob, what lovely weather today. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I've been out to that area out there, and, and that's located out there in Kent Thompson Park, and uh, it's a great facility. You learn a lot out there, and they have even a great uh, app that you can learn about all the different birds that are lined up there and check those out. So, a beautiful day today. Uh, again, Save Our Sea Birds is what we're talking about there, but uh, we are looking at a beautiful beach day for all the folks out there enjoying the waters. And it looks like it's gonna stay pretty calm, too, over the weekend as a result of a large area of high pressure. Sun setting tonight without any clouds around, really. Most of the clouds down to our south associated with those showers. You can see some rainfall mainly east of I-75. This is the east coast breeze, and we do have a little collision taking place right there with the west coast breeze making it well inland, but the heavier showers are down to our south. Some false echoes out there, if you will, out there in the extreme Gulf of Mexico, southeastern Gulf. But these are legitimate showers. They're pushing off toward the west. I would not be surprised to see Port Charlotte and Punta Gorda getting some rain here shortly, and this will have a tendency to work off toward the west. So you can see that a West Coast sea breeze has made it all the way to the eastern portion of Manatee County. Not much going on near the coast. The coast is clear, so to speak, through the next at least couple of hours, and then we'll start to see some of this activity uh, moving toward the coast. The rain chance, though, tonight only at 20 percent. That West Coast sea breeze, not a lot. It's uh, anywhere from 5 to 10 miles an hour up and down the coast, and we are expecting uh, generally fair skies overnight and only a slight chance for a shower or two over the weekend. More on that a little bit later. Right now it's 86. The heat index still fairly high at 93. More on your weather in just a few minutes, Alan. Thanks, Bob. And still to come, the controversy continues over President Trump's announcement. He does not have tapes of conversations with former FBI Director James Comey. So what was with the tweet inferring he did? Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. The impacts of greening are affecting every corner of our economy. Local experts and business owners speak out about how citrus greening is impacting Florida's cash crop and how it continues to hurt Suncoast farms and workers. I'm Alan Cohn. We'll hear from local citrus growers on our roundtable discussion. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I dream of the creature by night and by day Wielding my weapon, I slaughter my prey Two thousand cash shall be rolling in dough So hey, a big monster, come out from below So hey, a big monster, come out from below I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. 
we answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. ABC7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast. So what was that about? In a tweet, President Trump implied there may be recordings of his private meetings with fired FBI Director James Comey. Then 41 days later, on the eve of a congressional deadline to hand over the recordings, the president tweets again, saying, in effect, never mind. ABC's Maggie Rooley is at the White House with more. It was the tweet that was supposed to end the tape debate, but now instead, many lawmakers are left only asking more questions. I didn't tape, and I don't have any tape, and I didn't tape. President Trump backs up his tweet on Fox News this morning, confirming that he never taped his conversations with former FBI Director James Comey, but also opening up the possibility that another organization may have. You never know what's happening when you see that the Obama administration, and perhaps longer than that, was doing all of this unmasking and uh, surveillance. And despite the White House hoping Trump's recent tweet shuts down the ongoing tape saga. I believe that the president's remarks on Fox and Friends this morning uh, reflect the president's position. The ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee, Representative Adam Schiff, says the president's explanation is not good enough, saying the White House must respond in writing to the committee as to whether any tapes or recordings exist. Representative Schiff goes on to say that he wouldn't rule out handing a subpoena to the White House if the committee doesn't get the information that they're looking for. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, the White House. When we return, we'll discuss the week in Washington, more on the tapes that never were, a special congressional election that was, and a Republican health care bill that the Republican Sarasota chairman says probably won't pass when we take it to the trapezoid. What's a nice Jewish girl to do when she can't introduce her wasp boyfriend to her conservative parents? Hire an actor. Hilarious and insightful, Bo Jest is at the Player Center June 14th through the 25th, and it's your ticket to a sizzling summer. Call the players at 365-2494 or visit theplayers.org. Don't miss Bo Jest. Save big during the 4th of July clearance and pay no interest for 48 months with same-day pickup or next-day delivery. This special purchase double reclining sofa for only $4.99. This special purchase white Florida bedroom for $5.99 and the matching nightstand is free. This special purchase Serta Perfect Sleeper Queen set for $3.99. Exclusively at the Furniture Warehouse in Sarasota, Bradenton, Veniceport, Charlotte, and Ellington. And save big. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now, make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-685-6422, 800-685-6422. Hurricane season is here, and so is the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with pets, and important phone numbers. Visit mysuncoast.com and download the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. 
Welcome back. It's been another wild week in Washington with President Trump admitting he doesn't have taped conversations with former FBI Director James Comey, a GOP win in a special congressional election in Georgia, and the unveiling of the Senate Republican health care proposal. And joining us to discuss the events of this week is the pol political editor of the Herald Tribune, Zach Anderson, New College political science professor Frank Alcock, and Sarasota Republican chairman and state representative Joe Gruders. Gentlemen, thank you very much for, for joining us. But uh, Frank, the first question is to you. You have a president whose approval rating is down to 36 percent, whose campaign and himself personally is under criminal investigation by a special counsel. Why can't you win any special congressional elections? Well, that was a tough district to win. Uh, you're going against the, the tide, and I think the polarized state of the country, regardless of how angry people are and disappointed they are with the Trump administration, you still come back to some of the fundamentals there. It's going to be hard to overperform. And my understanding in terms of while the country wanted to make that race all about Trump, over the last month or so, both candidates were actually trying to run to the center and make it more about uh, themselves. And so, yeah, there is a little bit of disappointment in that uh, a lot of the polls keep underestimating Republican support. It was a close race. I think uh, the Democrats overperformed there, uh, but it just wasn't enough to overcome that district. Joe, what does it say that I believe the Republican won by four points? Tom Price, who ran in November, won by, I think it was 22 points. So it was a lot closer than it was just a few months ago. Well, if you look at the same district, I think Donald Trump only won it by a point and a half. So it shows you that that race was competitive, certainly at Trump at the top of the ticket, you know, to now uh, the, our new congresswoman actually did better than Trump. But when you look at it, the Democrats were easy, were quick to say, this election is going to be a referendum on Trump. And what it proves is that people decided to stay with Donald Trump and the Republican voters and Republican philosophy up in D.C. And I think it bodes well for Republicans in 2018 because a lot of people are afraid that maybe nationwide, maybe the national political environment may be a, a bad, bad time to run if you're a Republican. But now, obviously, five special elections, five big wins. Republicans are on a roll. I think that once we could start passing some of these small issues, we could tackle health care, tackle tax cuts, and I think that we're in for an even better year in 2018. Of course, Zach, people want to know what implications that election and the other special elections have here on the Sun Coast and in the, the greater Tampa Bay area. Steve Shale, who is a, a very respected Democratic strategist, uh, pointed out that that Georgia race, that district, is redder, more Republican than the districts here, whether it's Vern Buchanan's district or Gus Belarakis or Dennis Ross. So you cannot necessarily take what happened there and apply it to the prospects here. That's true, but I do think that it is a bad sign locally for Democrats. If you look at like Vern Buchanan's district, the 16th congressional district, it's not that much less Republican than that district in Georgia. It's actually fairly similar. similar. And if you look at um, that district in Georgia, Trump only won that district by 1.5 percentage points, which was a big reason the Democrats ha thought they could win that. E even though it's a Republican district, it wasn't necessarily a Trump district. Buchanan's district, Trump won by 11 percentage points. This is more Trump country here. So, uh, you know, they couldn't win that race even though Trump performed poorly there uh, relative to some other Republican seats. And the, the Democratic candidate, Ossoff, he got $23 million. I mean, just raised an enormous amount of money. A local Democrat is probably going to raise much less money and go up against a, a, a Republican that has a lot more money. Frank, uh, Steve Shell goes on to say the best thing that the Democrats can do is find good candidates. So what are the Democrats doing to find good candidates? They're working very hard. Uh, they're out there contacting uh, a lot of folks. Um, I've been contacted uh, myself. It's just, it's a year and a half out, uh, and the Democrats got to keep working hard. And this terrain here, you need people uh, willing to step forward that are high quality candidates when the prospects are, are going to be less than 50%, probably considerably less. Joe, I mean, it's not the I easiest sell. I, yeah. I think candidates really matter. It makes a big difference. Ossoff, you know, he was kind of a generic Democrat. 30 years old, didn't have deep roots in the community. I think to win in these Republican districts, you have to have somebody who has a lot of credibility in the community if you're a Democrat. All right, we are just getting started <coughs> with this conversation, and we will pick it up right after we check on the weather. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. 
This Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Minute is brought to you by Sarasota Ford. The Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix was first organized in 1985. What began as an annual beach picnic for local children with special needs has expanded into an 11-day festival with the races televised to more than 100 countries. The entire festival is produced by Suncoast Charities for Children. The Grand Prix not only generates revenue for charity, but also a significant economic impact. Last year's event generated an economic impact of $37 million. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory, so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad, and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-962-4112. That's 1-800-962-4112. Call now, 1-800-962-4112. For a free brochure, call 1-800-962-4112. I'm Alan Cohn. Citrus screening continues to impact the state's economy, how local citrus growers are dealing with the disease, and how experts believe it will change the future of farming. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Our discussion of the week in Washington will continue in just a moment, but right now let's get a check on the weather from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, day today it was a warm one too at that uh, heat indices up in the mid 90s not as bad as it was yesterday as the humidity has come down a little bit but boy look at this beautiful day on the beach today the waves are coming down and things are looking pretty good for the weekend too hardly any clouds out there so load up on the sunscreen the uv index will be high all weekend long now the weather headlines read like this and it looks pretty good for us this weekend. More storms out to start the work week next week. We'll get back into that afternoon and evening thunderstorm pattern. We could even see a few morning showers next week. And the tropics are quiet for now. Now, this is a little unusual to see two storms in June. Typically, we only get one storm to form in the month of June every five years. And we had two this season thus far. Well, the enhanced satellite imagery, speaking of the tropics, not much going on now down there in the Caribbean. You can see this is a counterclockwise swirl, but it's an upper level low. In the upper levels of the atmosphere, we're talking 40,000 feet, 30, 40, 50,000 feet. You need high pressure up there. This is a low pressure system, so no concern of this one developing remnants of Brett and kind of entrapped with inside that flow. Well, this is the flow of Cindy. It's still circulating there and still causing damage. Look at this. Trees down. These are all storm reports that you see these little rectangles of trees down and storm damage associated with Cindy. Still a big factor. Who says tropical weather doesn't have an impact on Kentucky or even southern Ohio? I remember a few years ago, uh, one tropical storm, at least uh, the remnants of it, uh, took out power all across the state. But this one uh, still causing some problems in southern Ohio. This is the cold front that will eventually catch up to it and will cause some flooding concerns in West Virginia as well as toward New Jersey over the uh, Saturday at least. Well, showers down to our south, that's where the moisture has kind of moved. Notice this, this looks like returns of rain, but it's not. We've been talking about this for the last few months, exercises going on with the military down in the uh, Key West area, and that just travels uh, north on a southerly flow right now, and that's what we're seeing, false echoes out there in the Gulf. But these are real, and the showers are approaching uh, Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte, not a lot. You may see a brief shower here or two as the southeast wind and south southerly flow continues to combine with that west coast sea breeze. Showers are approaching, but notice not very intense storms at all, and they're mainly inland, so I don't suspect to see anything along the coast. They're 86 degrees right now, the heat index 93, and winds are out of the west southwest with that sea breeze. The pressure 2998, that is falling slightly. The high was right at the average today, the low pretty close to it as well. Record high 99 degrees. 
and rainfall so far for the month pretty good over four inches above average and for the year we're just over a half inch below average and looks like we'll get back into that rainy pattern really again the start to work week not so much over the weekend there will be a few showers around in that west coast breeze but it looks like most of that will be inland and we'll see a little bit better chance for showers on sunday afternoon but those two shouldn't be that widespread and should not be all that intense but i think Monday, things start to change a little bit. Dew point temperatures are seasonal, mid 70s. That's what they typically are during the summer. And temperatures around the area, mid 80s, comfortable at the area beaches. Longboat Key at 85, Palm Air 87, one degree warmer at Lake Sarasota now. And 90 in Plantation, Northport, you're at 90 and 85 in Inglewood. The forecast tomorrow looks to be pretty good. Lots of sunshine and should be uh, fair weather throughout most of the day. Temperatures at the beaches in the upper 80s. And just east of that will be in the low 90s. For boaters tomorrow, Nice boating weekend, a light chop out there. And as far as the forecast goes for the next seven days, well, it looks good well, for Saturday and Sunday. Monday, though, we start to get more showers and storms around, more numerous Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Alan will be back right after this. Stick around. It's Lincoln Summer Sales Event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $249 per month or 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203, 800-759-0203. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing the week in Washington. Our guests tonight are the politics editor for the Herald Tribune, Zach Anderson, political science professor Frank Alcock, and Sarasota Republican chairman and state representative Joe Gruders. So finally, the, uh, the, the senators, uh, the Republican senators unveiled their health care proposal after the House passed one uh, some time ago. Uh, Joe, it's been described as landing with a thud. Uh, that uh, you have a number of Republican senators who say that they will not vote for it. Others, the more moderate ones, haven't even spoken to it. And according to a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, by a three to one margin, the American public holds a negative view to the, the Republican proposal there. And strikingly, it goes on to say, even Republican respondents to the poll are lukewarm about the bill, only 34% viewing it positive. Well, my guess is most Republicans don't even know what's in the bill because it was just released. And you're right, there's not a lot of excitement, but I think what this is, is this is a starting point. And the biggest deal for me is, is I think one of the proposals is to end the individual mandate 
which basically means that you're no longer going to be taxed or assessed a penalty if you don't have health insurance. The problem is, is a lot of people can't afford the, the health insurance, and as a, the Obamacare rates continue to rise, it's putting a lot of the middle class people who bears the brunt of the Obamacare expenses. And I will just tell you from a personal standpoint, my health insurance, we had a great plan. We went on to Obamacare. We ended up paying probably 1000 or 1500 more a month. And we have this huge high deductible. So we probably paid twelve to 15000 in total more for our health care expenses as a middle class family, taking away all my expendable income. Obamacare is this. a bad deal. If we do nothing, it's going to collapse on its own. But I hope to God something changes because we can't, we can't continue on with the system Let that we have. Let me ask you this, because during the campaign, the president said he would not cu cut Social Security, not cut Medicare or Medicaid. This bill does, and the early feedback we have on it is the people who most should be concerned about this are older Americans, uh, people who have uh, parents or grandparents in nursing homes, and there's a specter now about whether those people are going to get thrown out of those nursing homes. We That's yeah, I agree. That affects a lot of people here on the Sun Coast. The, the plan helps. I mean, if you're a high-income family, this is you're going to like this. If you're a wealthy American, you're going to like this. If you are a young American, relatively healthy, you're going to like it. You're probably going to be paying less for your health care. If you are a low-income American, you're going to get crushed. You're going to be paying a lot more for your health care. Middle-class, working-class families are probably going to be paying higher deductibles. Uh, they're also going to get, I think, plans that have... There, there are less safeguards in there, so you're going to get these lemon plans where they're going to realize that a lot of things that they thought were covered were not covered. Uh, and if you're somebody that uh, relies upon treatment for mental health uh, issues, um, addiction issues, those programs get crushed into this. Zach, how does that play here on the Sun Coast? I don't think it really changes the fundamental debate. The Senate bill is a little bit more generous than the House bill, but it's very, pretty similar. And the basic political dynamic is, you know, you have the, the left uh, really upset about this, pushing back. It's one of the animating forces behind these indivisible groups. And Republicans are a little bit lukewarm about it. So the energy is more on the left to try and protect this right now. As you said, the bills aren't extremely popular, but a lot of that will depend on how Republicans sell this come election time. So that could change. But I do know one thing. Health care is extremely personal to people. I was at a meeting this week where I talked to a man who wasn't very involved in politics, but he came out to one of these indivisible meetings because his son had a pre-existing condition and got health care under Obamacare and had to have brain surgery. And so it really pushed him into activism when he thought that this is going to be taken away. So it could be a very potent issue. Predictions here, because after the House barely passed their version of this bill, uh, you heard a lot of discussion, boy, it was that difficult in the House. It's going to be nearly impossible to do it in the Senate. In the end, does the Senate pass a bill, and in the end, does uh, the Senate and the House agree with a united bill that would be signed into law? Joe? Probably not. Uh, you know, you I don't thi think that they're no, going to get health care. But, but you never know. But obviously, something needs to change. My, my advice is let people have Obamacare, <laughs> let's continue on it, and let it be crushed under the system. Because eventually, rates can only get so high before the middle class raises their hand and say, I've had enough. But obviously, we're not there yet. You know, you know, we have to find some other long-term solution to address the rising medical, you know, uh, costs in, in the whole throughout the country. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if this bill is going to completely uh, fix all that. So as a result, I think it will continue to be a political hot potato, and I think the Republicans will pass. I'm kind of surprised with your position there, but <laughs> Frank. Uh, Truly, it's a, it's a coin flip, I think, but my prediction is that they actually do pass it and Republicans regret it for a generation. Zach? I think it's 50-50 right now. It, you know, the president is obviously very behind this. He wants to get a win. He's going to push really hard. He's worried that he's going to lose face. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get to yes. Let's talk about Russia for a second. Uh, the president announced by tweet. Uh, yesterday that no, he did not uh, tape uh, James Comey. Uh, after 41 days of basically floating it out there, uh, and now you also have the specter of uh, the uh, uh, story in the Washington Post today that they actually were able to see uh, Putin's orders to interfere in the election. Uh, Joe, every time uh, the, the administration, the Congress wants to move on to other things, Russia, Russia, Russia keeps on uh, creeping back into it. Uh, how difficult is it to move on with the agenda when you have this not going away? 
Well, the problem is the liberal, de liberal Democrats, Obama's holdover, staff members that are in the administration, they won't let it go. And, and the Democrats have done a great <coughs> job since Trump's been elected of having constant disruption, trying to, trying to turn everything away from any type of policy that Trump, whether it be health care, whether it be tax cuts, anything else from, getting, from taking shape because you're constantly bombarding every, the American public. And, I, and at the end of the day, I think most Americans have enough common sense to know that there's no, that Donald Trump's not under investigation personally over this Russia scandal. I think it's going it, to, it, 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 I'm glad the special counsel has been ordered because I think it's going to, it will take time to, to go through everything. But I think Donald Trump and his administration, all of his guys will be completely exonerated and we can move forward. But that's not what people want to know. The de what the Democrats are trying to do is they just don't want Trump to have any type of advantage of trying to move his agenda forward. So they're constantly throwing these snowballs out and trying to hit people in the face. And, and to me, it's a, uh, uh, the, the Republicans have never acted like that. And to me, it's disappointing that they would, they would treat uh, this entire administration so far the way they have. Uh, Frank, what about uh, that? Because there have been so many leaks over the last five months, but the one thing we have not seen is any bombshell evidence of collusion. And is that the whole ball game? It, it might be. Uh, we're talking about on the, whether it rises, whether the revelations and the information that's released rise to the level of uh, technically and legally collusion remains to be seen. Uh, at minimum, though, uh, you know, the, the, the Trump campaign uh, accepted, tacitly accepted uh, assistance in Russian meddling, refused to acknowledge it after the fact, refused to hold Russia accountable. While it might not rise to the level of obstruction in a criminal sense, uh, there's certainly interference on the part of the president in an investigation um, and gross misconduct. I mean, conduct unbecoming. And so while the leaks continue, you know, the more the lies, the more the leaks. But what, so specifically, it's not go away. what specifically should he be charged with? What specifically did he do? I'm not sure if he's going to be charged with an actual crime. And it would probably be articles of impeachment if there was evidence that there was some sort of print. There's well, no quid, evidence. Quote, quote. There is no obstruction no. of justice. It, this whole thing is just a charade to take people away from the problems that face our country. That's why people hate politics. That's why people hate D.C. That's why, why people hate Tallahassee. We have to clean the system. We should come together as a country, Republicans, uh, Democrats, uh, and move Trump, forward. Trump has added to this a little bit. You know, firing Comey brought more attention Comey onto this whole... Comey should have been fired by, Cl <laughs> by But it by brought Obama. more intention, uh, attention onto this whole issue. You know, maybe it was just a lot of smoke and there wasn't any fire there. But firing Comey, you know, brought in the special prosecutor. It's focused people more on this. So, you know, from a political perspective, Trump might have hurt himself I, with that. If I was a Democrat, sure. if, real Hold quick. Hold on one second. Let okay. me just ask you this, this one question. I heard this the other day. Let's say Hillary Clinton won. Let's say Comey reopened the investigation into the emails, and then she fired him. Would you be pushing for impeachment? That investigation was ongoing as it was. But she, the, what Comey did, Same to, in, in my <laughs> eyes... What Comey did is he put himself and he tried to make himself more powerful than the president by getting involved in the election did early Hillary on, by doing Clinton this up with Clinton. Fire James Comey after he reopened the investigation. He, would Republicans if I was Hillary Clinton, I would have fired him for the first day I took office. He, he, he shouldn't have been allowed to stay on because I think he put himself in a position to where we shouldn't be hearing the FBI d director come out with any type of these political okay. statements to change outcomes of elections. Right. He made himself more important than the president. He should have been fired a long time ago, and Donald Trump did the right thing. Okay. Let's take a break, and when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on a pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. 
Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Welcome back. We have been discussing a busy week in Washington, and our guest joining us right now for final thoughts. So, uh, you know, we... Boy, it's been such a wild ride the last couple of weeks. Joe, do you think in the end this was a good week for the president? Yeah, I think everything, every week that he continues to be office, in office is a good week. I think that he'll continue to try to work on specific policies, and, and I hope that either the health care bill or maybe his tax package bill, we could start getting some traction in Congress in D.C. and start passing maybe, I mean, so these bills are both huge packages, but maybe you can come out with something smaller but to every, get some momentum, and then I think every, that's what he needs to help his presidency out. Every time we start talking about health care or tax reform or infrastructure, then he tweets about Russia. Because the liberal Democrats are constantly throwing the snowball. isn't that stepping on your own message? The, the, the liberal Democrats are constantly isn't that stepping throwing on the your own message. message. I, I certainly think You're he should probably... to the White House in the middle of the night and grabbing his... <laughs> I, I, I would probably his prefer that he, that he not tweet as much, but I think that uh, that's the way he is, and I think he likes to take his message directly to the public. Uh, I think overall he'll continue to improve. And, and listen, this is the first time he's ever held elected office, so he's learning, and I think he's only going to get better from here, and we're going to have big wins in I, 2018. I think I heard Joe say, you know, every week that he stays in office is a good week, and I might have to agree with him. Every week that he avoids impeachment for another week, relatively, might be a, a good week for the Trump administration. Uh, Zach, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we do see, you know, his, uh, his approval rating in a lot of polls now down to 36 percent. Do you suspect it's different here on the Sun Coast? Uh, yeah, I, I think he's more popular here. As I said, in Buchanan's district, you know, he got 11 percentage point wins. So, I mean, he's obviously more popular locally than he is nationwide. And when you talk to local Republicans, they're not concerned about this Russia stuff. You know, they're not, they're more focused on, you know, immigration, repealing Obamacare, some of these things. Until there's some really hard evidence that he did something wrong, I don't think most of his local supporters are going to turn on him. All right, we'll have to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you. FYI, if you want to watch past roundtable discussions, they're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thank you to our guests for being here tonight. Zach Anderson is the politics editor for the Herald Tribune. Frank Alcock is a political science professor at New College. And Joe Guters is Sarasota's Republican chairman and state representative. When we return, we'll have a final look at your weather, plus a look into the Senate Republican health care proposal and what it will mean to the Suncoast coming up on Prime Time Headline. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has answered calls for recovery and treatment 24-7, 365 days a year. If you're depressed, drinking, using drugs, or taking pills, call now and talk to someone who cares. 
I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Most insurance covers substance abuse. You can get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call 800-622-1941. 800-622-1941. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, thanks. A beautiful evening to watch the sunset tonight as uh, things are rather calm out there. No major storms around. There are a few down into Charlotte County and some into Hardy and DeSoto counties. But all in all, it's been a relatively quiet day today with a lot of sunshine, great beach weather. You can see some of the anvil, or at least the spill off of the higher clouds coming up from those storms I mentioned down south in that last frame there. Well, Cindy, the remnants thereof, still causing some problems in Kentucky, southern Ohio, and there's some downed trees all the way across from Pennsylvania, westward through West Virginia, and into Kentucky. You can see the swirl right there it is. It's uh, actually going to meet up with this cold front, and it's also going to cause some problems with some heavy rainfall. Could be some flooding problems in West Virginia all the way over to the mid-Atlantic coast states. Now, for us, I mentioned that little swath of shower activity making its way through now, and there's not a lot of rain associated with it, but it could generate one or two lone showers down the road. Uh, this is a controlled burn that you see right there, the returns showing up. And then the rain coming in into Fort Myers and now entering close to Port, uh, Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte. Not a lot of lightning strikes with this activity. And I think that'll be the trend over the weekend. Not many storms. There'll be a few around, but not uh, the typical afternoon and evening variety of widespread rain that we normally see. That comes back in the weather picture on Monday after the weekend is over. Thankfully, 86 degrees now. The dew point is at 73. Winds are out of the west southwest at 7. The pressure 29.98 inches. And that wind will be Relatively light for boaters. Not bad out there. A little west coast sea breeze developing in the afternoon. Anywhere from 5 to 10 miles an hour. And then becoming rather variable throughout the evening hours. Now the dew point temperatures are seasonal. This is what you would expect during the summer months. Into the mid-70s up and down the coast. And 77 now into Key West. 74 in Miami. And those are important numbers because that usually dictates how muggy it is out there. If we get into the mid to upper 70s, it's really quite uh, noticeable. 85 in Holmes Beach, a few degrees warmer in Braden now, 89 in Rosedale, and uh, Lake Sarasota at 88, 88 as well. In Venice, cooler with the clouds and rain cool there in Rotunda, 82 degrees. In Northport, you're at 85, and Port Charlotte at 86. For beaches tomorrow, looks to be nice. Sunshine, just a few clouds, and temperatures topping out around 87 degrees there. Just away from the water, though, elsewhere, it'll be in the low 90s, even some mid-90s in places like Highlands County. The RPM forecast model showing a few showers possible this evening, not much. Then tomorrow we'll start off sunshine, should be a beautiful day, and we'll have uh, good weather for most of the events taking place, and then a few inland storms are possible. Again, a Sunday afternoon, a little bit better chance to see some showers popping up along the sea breeze front as some more moisture moves in, but most of the activity should be inland throughout Sunday afternoon as well. Temperatures now across the Great Lakes, still pretty mild to cool. 60s in Ohio and 77 now in Detroit, 73 in Green Bay, 84 in Salt Lake City, so things starting to cool down a little bit. Over the central Rockies, still hot though in Phoenix and Las Vegas. It's 112 at this hour. Atlanta checking in at 86 and Macon at 90. Well, here's the forecast uh, for boaters tomorrow. Winds will be relatively light, around 10 knots, and seas running right around 2 feet and a light chop on the bays and inland waters. There it is. The water temperature is really warmed up. It's now at 88 degrees, and the UV index will be high. The sunshine in full effect tomorrow. Low tide at 819, sunset at 828. And the forecast, partly cloudy, a 20% chance for shower through this evening. Not much. Tomorrow, the rain chance at 30%, otherwise partly cloudy. And then there we go. Temperatures warming up as we head in through the work week next week. Alan's back with primetime headlines right after this.
This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. We're gonna go out there in the rain. Gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain! Okay, quick. Oh yeah, yes. So much fun. Mwah. Checking our primetime headlines, today the battle over the Senate GOP health care bill plans heads to next phase, possible negotiations. Right now, the Senate bill to repeal and replace Obamacare does not have enough Republican votes to pass. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest from Washington. President Trump at the White House focused on Veterans Affairs Friday. We've already achieved transformative change at the VA, and believe me, we're just getting started. Also getting started, negotiations on the Senate GOP health care bill. The president telling Fox News it's complicated. It's a very, very narrow path, but I think we're going to get there. The Republican plan to replace the Affordable Care Act facing major opposition. Moderates worry it guts Obamacare too much. This bill that's currently in front of the United States Senate, um, not the answer. Several top health and medical groups agree. The March of Dimes saying its disappointed Senate leadership has failed to protect pregnant women, infants, and families. At least four conservatives, including Rand Paul, also coming out strong against the bill. I didn't run on allowing the death spiral of Obamacare to continue just to subsidize with taxpayer money. The bill ends the requirement that everyone must have health insurance, offers tax credits to help Americans buy coverage, but scraps subsidies to lower costs, rolls back the Obamacare expansion of Medicaid, but leaves in place protections for people with pre-existing conditions. That could be a major sticking point for House Republicans who are paying close attention to what's happening in the Senate. Just like in the House, uh, that is a starting point, it's not the end point. The head of the House Freedom Caucus says he believes the Senate bill does not have enough conservative support to pass in the House. So what to expect next week? Negotiations, details on the potential impact on Americans, and not likely, but possible, a vote before the July 4th recess. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. Just as this year's hurricane season gets going, the federal agency that oversees disaster and recovery efforts has a new leader. Today, Brock Long was sworn in as the director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA. Long ran Alabama's Emergency Management Agency and served as that state's on-scene incident commander during the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in 2010. The White House has nominated New York Jets owner Robert Woody Johnson as ambassador to the United Kingdom, 
Johnson, who was a top fundraiser for Trump's presidential campaign, and the Republican National Committee will now have to be confirmed by the Senate. Doctors say a police officer who was stabbed in the neck on Wednesday at Bishop International Airport in Flint, Michigan, is lucky to be alive. A Canadian man, originally from Tunisia, slashed Lieutenant Jeff Neville's back and neck Wednesday morning, doctors at the Hurley Medical Center say the officer suffered a potentially life-threatening injury. It was approximately a 12-inch length uh, uh, laceration that extended all the way from the anterior part of his neck up by his, uh, if you will, the Adam's apple, extended all the way to the posterior aspect of his neck. Doctors expect Neville to be released from the hospital in the next couple of days. The FBI in Detroit said Thursday Amor Fatui tried to buy a gun once he arrived in the U.S., but instead bought a knife. They are investigating the attack as an act of terrorism. In London, firefighters are still trying to figure out what caused a massive tower fire that killed 79 people. Hundreds of families were displaced because of safety concerns as inspectors check exterior insulation panels like the ones used in the high-rise building. The material has been singled out because the fire engulfed the building in less than an hour. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise is no longer in the intensive care unit at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. Scalise was shot last week while he was practicing for the annual charity congressional baseball game. Scalise underwent multiple surgeries. He remains in fair condition. The mayor of Florida's capital city says the FBI questioned him as part of an investigation into development deals, but he says that he was told he is not a target of the probe. Tallahassee Mayor Andrew Gillum, who is also seeking the Democratic nomination for governor, says he spoke to the FBI last week and was asked about several people and businesses. Gillum said that if there was any corruption, those involved should be punished. A big Golf no-no for President Trump. Video of Trump driving a golf cart over the green at his New Jersey golf club has gone viral. It is not something you see often on a golf course and is considered to be bad etiquette. A man was overheard saying in the video, it's the only place you can drive on the green, your own golf course. Trump claimed he was playing a good game, but of course there's no video of that. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us and have a great weekend.